Good day grade 8 learners and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are now tuned into your first lesson of Economic Management Sciences for Term 1. As you know, AMS consists of three important sections, Financial Literacy, Economics and my personal favourite, Entrepreneurship. In our previous series of lessons, we looked at the Financial Literacy. Now in these few lessons, we will be focusing on Economics and entrepreneurship. If you are new to our channel, please ensure you watch all the videos on our financial literacy section. Do subscribe and watch through all of them so you can master economic and management sciences. My name is Ngosnati Koji and this is my contribution to Tumamina teaching. In the first term, we will focus on the economics part of the subject, but in the first two lessons, we will focus mainly on government. Are you ready to go? I know I am. Let's go. As you know, South Africa has a very unique political history. We know that it's also impacted its systems and its political climate. Now, who of you can tell me who was the very first president when South Africa became a democracy in 1994? Yes, you are right. Our former beloved president, Nelson Holihlahla Mandela, also known as Madiba, the father of our nation. Okay, so most of you knew who Madiba was, but who can tell me what a democracy is? As you know, a democratic country is a country where its citizens vote for who they think should run the country. Before the 1994 elections, black people could not vote in South Africa due to apartheid. The 1994 election was therefore a turning point in the history of South Africa. Last question. Now Klaus, who of you, by raising your hands, can tell your teacher who the current South African president is? So let's start at the beginning. So what does the word government mean? The word government comes from the German word, which in its turn borrowed the word from the Latin word regere, which means to direct or in the broader context to lead or rule. The government is therefore a group of people who rule over the citizens or residents of a country. As you know, South Africa is a democracy, which means that we as the citizens decide who we want as rulers of the country. We do this by voting every five years for the political party that we believe can run the country best. The party that gets the most votes is then the ruling party for the next five years, until we have to vote again. This is why it is very important that when we go to the voting stations, we think carefully about our decision and which party will best look after the country's needs. When you turn 18 one day, you can vote too. And I strongly encourage you to vote. Our country has many challenges and many of our citizens like to complain. But as I like to say, if you don't vote, you can't complain. It is our civic responsibility to vote. It is also important to know that the ruling party's elected leader can only serve for two terms of office. This means that if a ruling party wins the elections twice in a row, they may not choose the same leader for the third time. Okay, so grade 8 learners, the presidency of South Africa is located in the union buildings in Pretoria. This is where the most important decisions of the country are made. Think of the union buildings as the White House as they have it in America. The union buildings is the official seat of the South African government. Let's have a look at what the union building is and what it looks like. Okay, let's visit the union buildings. It's located in Pretoria. 
and let's fly in. So it's surrounded by beautiful gardens and monuments. This is a monument of Mandela. We have monuments of Jan Smits and Le Buerta. These buildings were built between 1910 and 1913. It looks over Pretoria. There you have it. Along with the government, which we have just learned about, there are also two other role players in the economy of a country, businesses and households. Along with the word government, we also need to know what a political party is. A political party is a group of people who think alike about how a country should be run and who then form and register a political party. We as the residents of the country can then decide which political party we want to vote for during the election process. South Africa has many different political parties. Let's see if you can name a few. Stop this video and mention a few political parties of South Africa and mention the political party that governs South Africa. So when a political party wins the election, they have to govern the country and make sure they keep to the promises that they have made during the election campaign. They have the responsibility to perform a variety of tasks and these tasks cannot be performed without the necessary resources and therefore money. The government receives money from the taxpayers which they must then use to provide the following services for us. Infrastructure such as building roads and bridges, electricity supply for the citizens and businesses, transportation services, healthcare, education, just to name a few. There are also different ways in which the government can obtain taxes from us citizens. However, we will discuss this in more detail in lesson number three, when we discuss the budget of the government. So let's move on to the three levels of government. In South Africa, we have three levels, national government, provincial government, and local government. And then also a separate legal system. This legal system tells us that all people, groups, and organizations, including the government, are subject to our country's constitution. The constitution is therefore South Africa's highest authority. We are very fortunate as South Africans to have one of the most progressive constitutions in the world that protects every dear South African. So let's take a closer look at the different levels of government. Now you will have to keep up with me now because there are different levels and branches in the hierarchy of government. We will first take a look at the national government. Under the national government, there are also three parties involved, the cabinet, the parliament and the judiciary. And to summarize them all very briefly, parliament makes the laws, the cabinet then makes sure the laws are carried out and the judiciary decides whether the citizens have violated the law or not. The president of South Africa is also the head of the cabinet and is assisted by the deputy president. They are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of our country. It is a very big task and therefore they will need help. That's why the cabinet has different ministers that are in charge of different sections of the country. The parliament is located in Cape Town and just like the union building, it is a very beautiful building. Let's have a look at how the parliament looks. 
Okay, let's visit the Parliament building in Cape Town. And flying in. Here we go. And right over there, there is the Parliament building. Beautiful building. And let's have a close up look. And there you have your Parliament building. The Parliament consists of two councils, the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. The National Assembly has around 400 members from different parties. These members are elected every five years during the national election. They are responsible for drafting the legislation. The National Council of Provinces is a body that was created to ensure that all nine provinces are involved in or participate in the legislative process. You will also see later on in this video that this National Council of Provinces can also be linked to the provincial government. The last level of the national government is the judiciary. It consists of the various courts such as the high courts and the district courts. Let's move on to provincial government. All of our nine provinces have their own government, which is called provincial government. They are responsible to making sure that things run smoothly in the specific province. These members and political parties are also elected every five years during the elections. The Executive Council, also called the MEC, or now Member of the Executive Council, of the province is led by the premier of the province. Each member has a specific department that he or she must manage. Finally, we will look at the local government. The local government refers to parties that look at specific towns, city or local municipalities. Large areas such as Johannesburg are governed by a metropolitan municipality and smaller places are governed by a local municipality, which together form a district. On the ground, they are responsible for managing roads, clinics, libraries, water, sewages, etc. And so, we have come to the end of our very first lesson. In the next lesson, we will look at the government and more specifically its role in relation to the household and the business sector. I know you like this lesson, so make sure you share, like, comment, please. But most importantly, please ensure that you look at the additional resources on the description below. Thank you so much. My name is Ngosnati. Have a great day. See you in the next lesson.